Well, welcome back to In the Kitchen with Grace. This morning I am putting together um, a little nectarine burrata caprese style salad. Um, I like to actually put these ingredients onto a mini naan bread and make it into a sort of pizza. Um, but I'm going for something a little bit lighter this morning and I will put all of the ingredients and directions in the description below. Um, this recipe is a little versatile, so you can uh, use peaches instead of nectarines. You can swap out the style of nuts and the dressings and the cheese. <clears throat> I'm just going to kind of share with you the base of what I put into this. Um, it's pretty healthy and uh, filling, and I really enjoy this for kind of an early light brunch um, sometimes. So um, instead of non bread today, I'm actually using up some English muffin. I have some leftover English muffins and um, so I toasted one half and I kind of crumbled it up and I'm going to or into bite-sized pieces. I'm going to put that into my salad bowl and then I have um, some spinach. I've got some baby spinach and I'm going to grab just about a handful or so of spinach and I'm going to kind of just tear it up a little bit. I like my spinach to be in smaller pieces. So again, if I was putting this on non bread, the non bread would be on the bottom, then I would layer some spinach. I have some fresh mozzarella. And I'm going to kind of just piece this out. some bite-sized pieces and then we have some pecans if you want to you can candy the pecans um, I have steps on how to make candied nuts in my winter spinach salad recipe so I will link to that for you basically you just put a little bit of sugar and honey into a small pot um, let it simmer and melt together and then you put your nuts in there and got them get nice and coated and then you let them dry I'm skipping the candied part today because I'm going to just drizzle some honey onto My salad anyways, which is going to make it sweet Also some lemons left over. I'm trying to use up the last of a couple lemons. I was on a lemon kick uh, Lately and so I've got two lemons left. I'm going to juice uh, one lemon kind of over the top. And if you have a really juicy lemon, just stick with half of the lemon. And then I have my nectarine. I have um, got a whole nectarine here. If you want to, you can slice it or you can dice it. I'm going to make mine into bite sized pieces. This salad is a great way to get some greens and some protein and some fruit into you all in one little bowl. It's also really pretty and colorful. It's a nice spring summer salad. For dressing, so if I was going to make this as a non-bread pizza, um, usually I use a regular balsamic vinaigrette dressing for my non-breads, but this is a sweeter with a nectarine, um, and so a lot of times I like to use, it's a white balsamic peach vinaigrette. I actually got this at Aldi's, um, but you could probably find it in most stores or something similar. It's got that light, sweet, fruity flavor to it. Um, and drizzle it on just a little bit. I'm going to add honey. So I'm really not adding much of the dressing at all. Just the slightest little bit. It's probably like a tablespoon in total. And then I've got some honey and I'm going to do the same thing with honey. Drizzle just the slightest bit. You just want a tiny little bit in there. All right. And there we have it very healthy and very filling salad idea for you. I hope you all like this quick recipe. It's perfect for a lunch or a nice big breakfast. Be sure to subscribe so you can get all of our recipes. 
and follow us over on Facebook and Pinterest where you can save our recipes as well. We'll see you next time. Welcome back to In the Kitchen with Grace. Tonight we're doing dinner in the air fryer. Um, I am doing a honey bourbon marinade for our steak bites. And we are going to do Parmesan garlic French fries with aioli sauce to dip them in. And uh, it's just delicious. We'll just go with that. Uh, if you're new, welcome. Thank you for our, uh, watching today. I'm going to put all the ingredients and steps in the description below. What I love about this marinade, you can put this on steak. You can use this for grilling. Delicious. Um, okay, so I have my steak. My steak's going to hang out here for a second. And we're going to put together the marinade sauce. I am going to start with about a third cup of honey. I'm just going to squeeze it right into my mixing bowl here. About a third cup. And we are going to do a fourth cup of bourbon or whiskey. Whatever you got, get the good stuff. You want to make sure it's good enough to drink. We're going to pour this in. Don't tell the hubs you're using his good stuff for a recipe. It's kind of our kitchen secret, isn't it? Okay. Put the lid back on there on that. We are going to add in a fourth a cup of soy and a fourth a cup of... Worcestershire sauce, goodness sakes, Worc Worcestershire. Usually I can say that pretty well. Not today, apparently. All right, let's add a fourth a cup of each. You don't have to be spot on with these measurements. Oh, yeah. We're going to add in about two tablespoons of melted butter. We're going to add in about a tablespoon of minced garlic. Just going to eyeball it. There we go. Going to add in some salt, a little pepper, two or three tablespoons of olive oil. Just kind of drizzle that in there. Okay, we're going to give this a nice, good mix. Make sure you get that honey mixed in good. It kind of likes to stick to the bottom of your bowl. If you're looking for some other easy weeknight dinner recipes, check out that playlist. I'll link to it above. All sorts of easy, kid, family-friendly meals that you can make. also have tons of make-ahead slow cooker. If you're a busy family like we are, those sure come in handy, especially for meal planning. Okay, I'm going to grab my steak. And you can do this for full-size steaks. You can do this for steak bites. We have, like, mini thin sliced steaks. And I am going to kind of just let them hang out in here and soak. I'm actually not going to let them soak for too long. I'm going to end up putting them in the air fryer here probably in about 15 minutes. Um, if you've got more time, you can either put them all into the bowl and uh, cover it and store it in your fridge for a good 30 minutes to an hour or put it in a gallon of Ziploc baggie. All right, we're going to keep adding our steak and then we're going to get the fries ready and we will get the air fryer out and get this dinner going. Okay, we are ready to start the garlic parmesan seasoning for our french fries. And if you don't want to do these in the air fry, you could totally do this and put them in the oven. Perfect. Um, we are going to start with about another two tablespoons of melted butter. We're going to do one teaspoon or so of minced garlic. We are going to do about a teaspoon or so of Parsley or Italian seasoning just adds a little hint of flavor. 
and about a fourth a cup, I'm not even gonna measure, guys, of Parmesan cheese. And while I'm doing this, I have taken my French fries out of the bag and put them in a strainer and rinsed them off with cold water. If you want to, you can let them sit in the cold water for a good 10 to 15 minutes. It helps get rid of the starch out of your fries um, and just helps them absorb your moisture better and cook better in your air fry. It'll be more crispy. We're gonna mix this together. Forgot my sea salt. Where is it hiding here? Gotta have some salt on those fries. And I'm gonna add in just a little bit of olive oil. Makes them crunch up just a little bit better. Okay, that's probably about a good tablespoon or so. Mix this together nicely. Okay, and then I'm gonna grab my fries and we're gonna coat the fries with the seasoning. So I have my air fryer basket and I have put a couple of my steaks in here and some of my french fries and I am going to take my seasoning for the fries. I'm actually just going to kind of baste it on. Okay, perfect. I am going to set my air fryer to air fry. <laughs> And then um, the fries are gonna take probably about five to seven minutes. Every air fryer is a little bit different. Ours cook fries pretty good in about five to seven minutes. The steaks, depends on how well you like your steaks done. I like mine on the charcoal side. My husband likes his still mooing and my kids are somewhat in the middle. They like theirs medium well done. Um, so I am going to let these ones cook um, if you want a medium well done steak, it's usually about 10 minutes or so that I have found. Again, it depends also on the thickness of your steak or if you're doing steak bites. So just pay attention to what you are doing. Cook it how you want. Everyone's going to have a little bit different cooking time with their air fryer for this recipe. While we are waiting for the steak and the Parmesan fries to cook in the air fryer, we're going to make a little batch of aioli sauce to dip the French fries in. Um, if you want to, you could swap out mayo for some vanilla yogurt. My kids actually prefer it made with the uh, mayo. We're not big on mayo in our family, but for this recipe, I do it. And you're going to want about a half a cup or so. If you're going to be feeding a lot of people, you can always double this recipe pretty easily. And we are going to add in just one little teaspoon of minced garlic. We're gonna add in a little bit more parsley Italian seasoning. And I have got two lemons. You're gonna want about three tablespoons worth of fresh lemon juice. It kind of depends how big your lemons are. These are a little bit on the small side. Pretty juicy little lemons though, so I think maybe I can get away with just one. Perfect. And a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. Give it a nice little mix. a dash of paprika to mine. My husband actually likes red pepper flakes in his. All right, we're gonna put this in a little dish. I'm gonna let it chill in the fridge while our steak and fries finish cooking. 
air fryer is telling me it is time to flip my steaks over. These fries smell amazing. I can't wait to eat them. Dip them into our aioli sauce. The honey bourbon glaze steaks. Oh my gosh. This recipe is delicious. Your family's going to love it. Add it to your meal plan, y'all. Thank you so much for watching today, and we will see y'all next time. Welcome back to In the Kitchen with Grace. Today I am doing a super easy, delicious blueberry peach cobbler in the crock pot. A super easy dessert recipe that works great for take-alongs, get-togethers, potlucks, and it makes a dessert for dinner just lickety split. All right, so what I love about this recipe is you can interchange the kinds of fruit that you use Today I'm doing blueberry peach. I am going to use some fresh blueberries and I have some frozen Firestone peach slices and some canned frozen and drained, they're drained, uh, Firestone peach slices. I've got about mm, two and a half cups of peaches and maybe two cups of blueberries that we're going to use today. And as we put this together in our slow cooker, I'm going to uh, the first step is to kind of get your fruit blended together and rusting in their glaze, I guess you could call it. The second step is to prepare the, the cobbler breading um, that we're going to actually put as the first layer in our crock pot. Then we put the fruit on and then we pour buttermilk on top. Oh my gosh, you guys, I am smelling this already and I haven't even gotten started. All right, so to prepare your fruit, you're gonna put your fruit into a bowl. And again, you can interchange this. Cherries, strawberries, whatever you wanna use, go for it. I personally love the blueberry peach combination. I'm gonna sprinkle in my blueberries. If you're using fresh fruit, again, keep an eye out in case there's a rare one that doesn't look so hot, you can pluck it out. Mine look great. Okay, we are going to add in three teaspoons of sugar. Tablespoons, sorry, not teaspoons, guys. Three tablespoons of sugar. One, two, three. And then we're gonna add in two tablespoons of cornstarch. We're baking, we're, we're playing with dessert today. You gotta get a little messy if you're doing a little bacon. That is my philosophy. Okay, and then we are going to add in one teaspoon of vanilla. Honestly, I'm just gonna eyeball it. You know two things about me, y'all, if you've been around for a while. I love the slow cooker and I love vanilla. Okay, we're gonna mix this together and chocolate. Chocolate and coffee. Okay. You just kinda wanna get that cornstarch, sugar, vanilla mixed into the natural fruit juice, and we're gonna set that aside and let it sit for a while while we prepare our dough. Right, we are going to start with one and a half cups of flour. I also like this recipe. You don't have to be super precise with the ingredients. Um, we are going to do a third cup of sugar, white sugar. It's about a third. We are going to do one and a half teaspoons of baking powder. This is also a kid-friendly recipe. My daughter loves to help in the kitchen and this is something that's super easy for her to help make. So we got one and a half-ish. We're gonna add in one fourth teaspoon of salt. Really, it's just a little more than a pinch. And we're gonna add in a half a teaspoon of cinnamon. This recipe does not call for oats. If you are somebody who likes to do oats, Feel free to add some in. I love to have oats as like a crumbly topping, especially, ooh, apple crisp. You guys, I have the best apple crisp recipe. I kid you not. Go check it out. I will link to it. 
I don't care what season it is. Apple crisp is amazing. But if you want to add in some oats, feel free to do that on top or in with your fruit blend. Totally doesn't matter. I'm going to give this a quick stir and then we're going to chop up our butter a little bit and oh cinnamon smells amazing okay you want to have five tablespoons of cold butter I am just going to kind of pre measure here okay I like to finely slice it up I think it comes apart easier and crumbles into your flour mixture better just like this super easy and then you can just kind of let it it kind of naturally comes apart in your bowl and we're gonna mix this in until this whole thing gets a little bit crumbly I do is I take the remaining three tablespoons of that stick of butter and I slightly melt it in the microwave and then I pour it in and that really helps draw the flour together And you can see that your butter, it kind of crumbles up into little itty bitty pieces. It gets the flour stuck to it and will kind of come together pretty well. So spray your slow cooker. I like to use a liner with this recipe, especially spray it with your cooking spray. And then you're going to take your flour butter combination here and you're going to press it. Well, kind of press it. I don't want to say like super firmly. But you're going to kind of press it down a little bit so that it fills the whole bottom layer of your crock pot. You want to save a little bit, maybe about a cup's worth, and we're going to sprinkle that on the top. And then you're going to take your fruit mixture, give it another little stir quick, now that the sugar and the vanilla have kind of had a chance to blend in, and then you're going to pour your fruit right over the top of your cobbler batter and spread your fruit out nicely and then you're going to take your remaining flour mixture put it on top this kind of gives it a little bit of that crumbly if you wanted to use the oats this is where you would use your oats and then we need our buttermilk we're going to do about a third cup of buttermilk Honestly, I tend to use almost half a cup. I always pour half a cup and slowly drizzle. It doesn't require a ton. But you wanna slowly drizzle it over the top of your fruit and then it kind of soaks in. Kind of depends, if you're using that smaller, like it's taller, a crock pot, it doesn't really require as much because there's not as much space to cover. And then it will kind of sink and drizzle down in as it bakes. Mm. Okay, we are going to put the lid on. And I am going to let this cook on the low heat for about four hours. I'll check it at the two hour mark. If you need to cook it on high, you could do it on high for about two and a half to three hours maybe. Um, again, if you're going to do high, definitely keep a closer eye on it. Because you don't want it to burn. And we will come back and check on this later, you guys. It's going to make your whole house smell amazing. Oh, my goodness. This smells so good. This is going to be a delicious dessert tonight. Thank you all so much. I hope you love this recipe. Thank you for sharing our recipes um, over on Pinterest. And we'll see you guys next time.